Mother Teresa will be canonized on September 4th, 2016 at the Vatican. It has been said that she was a living example to others in carrying out God's love and mercy. Her image is known throughout the world, but what is her story? Allow me to introduce you to Mother Teresa with excerpts from her biography published on AmericanCatholic.org. Teresa was a force of nature and wholly unique. She was always her own person, startlingly independent, obedient, yet challenging some preconceived notions and expectations. Her own life story includes many illustrations of her willingness to listen to and follow her own conscience, even when it seemed to contradict what was expected. This strong and independent woman was born in Gangsha Bozhaku in Skopje, Yugoslavia on August 27, 1910. Though so much of her young life was centered in the church, Mother Teresa later revealed that until she reached 18, she had never thought of being a nun. During her early years, however, she was fascinated with stories of missionary life and service. She could locate any number of missions on the map and tell others of the service being given in each place. Called to religious life at 18, Gangsa decided to follow the path that seems to have been unconsciously unfolding throughout her life. She chose the Loretto Sisters of Dublin, missionaries and educators founded in the 17th century to educate young girls. In 1928, her future mother Teresa began her religious life in Ireland far from her family and the life she'd known, never seeing her mother again in this life, speaking a language few understood. During this period, a sister novice remembered her as very small, quiet, and shy, and another member of the congregation described her as ordinary. Mother Teresa herself, even with the later decision to begin her own community of religious, continued to value her beginnings with the Loretto sisters and to maintain close ties. One year later, in 1929, Gangsa was sent to Darjeeling to the novitiate of the Sisters of Loretto. In 1931, she made her first vows there, choosing the name of Teresa. Honoring both saints of the same name, Teresa of Avila and Teresa of Lisieux. In keeping with the usual procedures of the congregation and her deepest desires, it was time for the new Sister Teresa to begin her years of service to God's people. She was sent to St. Mary's, a high school for girls in the district of Calcutta. Here she began a career teaching history and geography, which she reportedly did with dedication and enjoyment for the next 15 years. It was in the protective environment of the school, teaching the daughters of the wealthy, that Teresa's new vocation developed and grew. This was the clear message, the invitation to her second calling, that Teresa heard on that fateful day in 1946 when she traveled to Darjeeling for retreat. The streets of Calcutta during the next two years, Teresa pursued every avenue to follow what she never doubted was the direction God was pointing her. She was to give up even Loretto, where I was very happy, and to go out in the streets. I heard the call to give up all and follow Christ into the slums to serve him among the poorest of the poor. Technicalities and practicalities abounded. She had to be released formally, not from her perpetual vows, but from living within the convents of the Sisters of Loretto. She had to confront the church's resistance to forming new religious communities and receive permission from the Archbishop of Calcutta to serve the poor openly on the streets. She had to figure out how to live and work on the streets without the safety and comfort of the convent. As for clothing, Teresa decided she would set aside the habit she had worn during her years as a Loretto sister and wear the ordinary dress of an Indian woman, a 
plain white sari and sandals. Teresa first went to Patna for a few months to prepare for her future work by taking a nursing course. In 1948, she received permission from Pope Pius XII to leave her community and live as an independent nun. So back to Calcutta she went and found a small hovel to rent to begin her new undertaking. Wisely, she thought to start by teaching the children of the slums, an endeavor she knew well. Though she had no proper equipment, she made use of what was available, writing in the dirt. She strove to make the children of the poor literate, to teach them basic hygiene. As they grew to know her, she gradually began visiting the poor and ill and their families, and others all crowded together in the surrounding squalid shacks, inquiring about their needs. Teresa found a never-ending stream of human needs in the poor she met, and frequently was exhausted. Despite the weariness of her days, she never omitted her prayer, finding it the source of support, strength, and blessing for all her ministry. A movement begins. Teresa was not alone for long. Within a year, she found more help than she anticipated. Many seemed to have been waiting for her example, to open their own floodgates of charity and compassion. Young women came to volunteer their services and later became the core of her missionaries of charity. Others offered food, clothing, the use of buildings, medical supplies, and money. As support and assistance mushroomed, more and more services became possible to huge numberings of suffering people. From their birth in Calcutta, nourished by the faith, compassion, and commitment of Mother Teresa, the missionaries of charity have grown like the mustard seed of the scriptures. New vocations continue to come from all parts of the world, serving those in great need wherever they are found. Homes for the dying, refugees for the care, and teaching of orphans and abandoned children. Treatment centers and hospitals for those suffering from leprosy. Centers and for refugees and alcoholics, the aged and street people. The list is endless. Until her death in 1997, Mother Teresa continued her work among the poorest of the poor. Depending on God for all her needs, Honors too numerous to mention had come her way throughout the years, as the world stood astounded by her care for those usually deemed of little value. In her own eyes, she was God's pencil, a tiny bit of pencil with which he writes what he likes. Despite years of strenuous physical, emotional, and spiritual work, Mother seemed unstoppable. Though frail and bent, with numerous ailments, she always returned to her work to those who received her compassionate care for more than 50 years. Only months before her death, when she became too weak to manage the administration work, she relinquished the position, the position of head of her missionaries of charity. She knew the work would go on. Finally, on September 5, 1997, after finishing her dinner and prayers, her weakened heart gave her back to the God who was the very center of her life. Mother Teresa will now be among the saints. It is fitting that her canonization is taking place during the year of mercy, as she so readily answered the call to mercy. This is a wonderful gift to the church, her canonization. We give praise and thanks to Almighty God for it, and for the life she lived with compassionate care for so many.